the mid-90s, Doom was probably the hottest thing in gaming. And since PC games were on another level from console games, those of us with crappy PCs or no PCs had to quench our thirst for Doom on one of these several console versions. And in this great sea of console versions, there are two that matter. Doom 64 and Doom for the PlayStation. This time I'm here to talk about the PlayStation port, on the box referred to as the Custom PlayStation Edition. PlayStation Doom matters because it houses a number of smart changes making it a unique Doom experience. It swaps the grating MIDI soundtrack for brooding amelodic ambience, retools the ultra-violence difficulty to include Doom 2 monsters in Doom 1 maps, graciously tightens up or flat out removes some of the game's more gigantic and mystifying levels, rebalances the roster of monsters, and goes the extra mile by throwing in some cool lighting effects. The only problem is that frame rate. Apparently it was something to boast about in 95, but large open rooms and monster closets slow the game down something fierce. Also, its lack of memory card save and absence of split-screen support is definitely a bummer. This is not the definitive Doom or Doom 2 experience, and if you've somehow never played Doom, the computer and XBLA versions are out there for you. However, if you fancy yourself an enthusiast, the custom PlayStation Edition is definitely a port worth your time. Doom is among my top 10 favorite games of all time, and probably the game I've played the most over my life. However, in the mid-90s, the most my computer could play was Wolfenstein 3D and Blake Stone. I recall the shareware of Doom running so slow it was basically unplayable. So my experience with Doom started primarily with, if you could believe this, the 32X port. A few years later, I upgraded to the PlayStation port before my parents finally upgraded our computer, where I then bought myself proper copies of Doom and Doom 2. Anymore though, coming back to Doom has been kinda tough. Buying Doom and Doom 2 one last time for XBLA, I realized these games, Doom 2 especially, too often cater to the hardcore crowd. And whether it was by fault of the PlayStation's limited processing power or by sheer cunning on the part of Williams Entertainment, the PlayStation port addresses nearly all the issues that hinder these classic games. For starters, Mr. I Can Hit You From Anywhere plus Resurrect the Dead, the Arch Vile, is completely gone. Also, both the rockets and running speed of the Revenants has been scaled way back. However, they tweak things further by peppering in chain gunners and pain elementals in Doom 1 maps. PlayStation Doom on ultraviolence is still extremely challenging, but these changes make it more fair. PlayStation Doom offers just shy of 60 levels, spanning all four episodes of Ultimate Doom and then Doom 2. Instead of episodes, this game is separated into these two halves. Now this is where Doom purists will probably flip out, because Williams Entertainment made liberal changes to the stages and the stage orders. Missing are larger levels like Against the Wickedly, Downtown, Gotcha, and The Chasm. And you know what? Good riddance, those giant levels were a drag. However, the Wolfenstein 3D levels were cut, and Club Doom does not fill this void. Also, Tower of Babel appears instead of at the end of what would be Episode 3, and a brand new level, Hellgate, takes its place at the end of what would be Episode 2. Furthermore, levels like Containment Area and Spawning Vats are not as big in this version. I'm not looking to turn this into an episode of Getting Super Nerdy, so I'll spare you the details. Just know that Williams made a bunch of changes, often swapping levels for brand new ones. But these changes are smart, addressing sore spots to make it feel more like a greatest hits remix of these classic campaigns. And the levels that Williams Entertainment made for this game are great. Another brilliant change was dropping that MIDI music. Listen, I love MIDI covers of Pantera and Alice in Chains songs as much as the next guy, but when levels take 10, 15 plus minutes, I can only take so much before I am running for my iPod. Again, maybe to save space from having 60 unique songs, we're treated instead to a wonderful soundtrack of creepy ambience, brilliantly composed by one Aubrey Hodges. Hodges' work elevates PlayStation Doom to a more unsettling level. I mean, the game takes place in hell, right? Hell seems like the type of place where you'd hear a melodic walls of noise, echoey groans, and otherworldly chanting. You can still turn down the music and throw on some Cannibal Corpse, but leaving the music up won't give you a headache. Hodges would later expand on these musical ideas two years later in Doom 64, crafting one of gaming's greatest and most underrated soundtracks. There is co-op and deathmatch, but it's through link cable connection only, so unless your buddy has a copy and a link cable, you can be sticking to that single player campaign. The game came out in 95, and even back then I thought it was weird it had passwords instead of memory card support. These aren't game-breaking problems, but they're definitely a bummer. 
What may be a deal breaker is the game's frame rate. Apparently, for a time, it was something to be proud of, but it's impossible to ignore now that things bog down. Also, PlayStation Doom existed in a time before analog sticks, and the D-pad does nothing to mitigate the lagging frame rate. However, the visuals aren't all that bad. The game employs special lighting effects, making old levels look creepier than ever. The PC and XBLA versions remain the definitive versions of Doom and Doom 2, but the custom PlayStation Edition comes damn close to joining their ranks. Williams Entertainment went the distance and made their version of Doom something special. Doom purists need not apply as they may see the level, enemy, and music changes as blasphemous, but to everyone else, it remains a port that fans should check out.